guard over our coastline for hundreds of years. Now, with ships relying more and more on technology, things like radar and satellites, the value of our region's lighthouses is under the spotlight. A public consultation by Trinity House, which is responsible for many of them, could see their use diminished or ended altogether. And not everyone thinks that's a good idea, as Victoria Webb reports. For more than 200 years, the lighthouse at Orford Ness has cast its beam out to sea. This is a notorious area. In 1627, before a lighthouse stood here, 32 ships were cast up on Orford Ness with barely a survivor amongst their crews. But these days, with advances in navigation technology, just how much do sailors rely on that light? Anant Bansal is the captain of this cargo ship, Dr. Felix Doe, destined for Rotterdam. Like this, you get your ship's position at all time. You can see where you are going, how close to your land, how far away from your land, is there any danger on your routes. So how much do you rely on lighthouses these days? Frankly, not at all. <laughs> lighthouses are good uh, monuments, I would say now, and a nice place to visit. <laughs> Trinity House is responsible for four of the five lighthouses in our region. There are more than 500 navigational aids around the coastline and they've been reviewing how necessary they are in a consultation. David Andron, chairman of the Old and Ore Association, says it would be sad and dangerous to see the lighthouse go. There is a real present danger of GPS failing and that's when lighthouses in particular are vital secondary aids to navigation. Worst case scenario around the coast of Britain is an oil tanker going aground because the GPS system has failed. In 1987, Haysborough Lighthouse was one of five declared redundant. Thanks to local fundraising, it's become the only independently run operational lighthouse in the country. With regards to Orford Ness, Trinity House says no decision will be made for a couple of months. Even if the lighthouse is no longer functioning, people around here feel very strongly that this landmark should be protected. Reports have suggested that if nothing is done with coastal erosion, the lighthouse could be lost to the sea within the next five years. The Old Anor Association believe there should be a beach stabilisation plan to save it. While Anant plans his next route on the satellite navigation equipment, there'll be many others like David doing all they can to ensure our lighthouses continue to be these iconic landmarks around the coast. Victoria Webb, Anglia News, Orford. Being at the top of a lighthouse is not the best place to find out that you're scared of heights. No, I can imagine. It's happened to I've me. I've never tried it. But <laughs> Still to come, we'll catch up on the goals from last night's football. And you've got to stay tuned for this. Natalie is stepping out on St Patrick's Day. But it's not as easy as the experts make it look. We'll show you how she got on later in the programme. And we certainly had the look of the Irish as far as the weather was concerned today, especially here at Barnum in Suffolk. But will we be this lucky for the rest of the week? I'll be back later with the details. Some more news now from your part of the region and a retired policeman from Norfolk has expressed his concerns over the possible invasion of privacy posed by Google Street View. Barry Woods from Halston got in touch after our report last week. He doesn't believe the company goes far enough in blurring people's faces and is demanding a picture of his house is removed. Google says it's happy to do so. Malcolm Robertson reports. Former police officer Barry Woods acknowledges Google Street View facility could be very useful. But he has issues with his house being identified on the internet. Barry contacted us after seeing our report about how people in the village of Broughton near Milton Keynes were complaining that their privacy was being invaded by the Google cameras. He takes issue with Google when he says that faces are always blurred. He claims that pictures of people on his local high street at Halston in Norfolk are quite recognisable and says Google have twice agreed to his request to remove his house from the Street View site but as yet haven't done so. You can effectively look over someone's fence uh, and zoom in on the rear of their property and any security they might have in place. And my concern is that uh, it enables somebody on the net who is not anywhere near me to view my property and if they wanted to do something that they shouldn't be doing then they would be quite happy to do so. 
Street View allows people from all over the world to take a virtual walk down your road. Cars with special cameras mounted on their roofs have captured pictures of more than 22,000 miles of the UK streets. Google says it goes to great lengths to safeguard privacy using technology that blurs faces and car number plates. You can actually arrange to have an image removed. You've got to find the picture you want amended and then click on where it says report a problem and follow the instructions. If you do that, Google says that within a few days it should be off the website. Barry Woods will be monitoring closely to see if it happens. Malcolm Robertson, Anglia News, Halston in Norfolk. Police have released on bail three men questioned over an armed robbery on a convenience store in Ipswich. The three, aged between 18 and 23 and all from Ipswich, were arrested yesterday in connection with a robbery at P&G stores on Orford Street on Saturday night. One of the defendants in a Bedfordshire murder trial has been acquitted of a charge of familial homicide. A judge said that there was no evidence linking the victim, Michael Gilbert, to 70-year-old Antonio Watt. Gilbert's body was found in the Blue Lagoon in Arlesey last year. The prosecution case has now concluded. A millionaire from Essex is selling everything he owns and giving the money to charity. Yes, John Pedley was a thief and a con man, but six years ago he became a born-again Christian. He now says that he's ashamed of the life that he was living and plans to move to Uganda and devote his life to helping others. It's a 16th century farmhouse with a million pound price tag. But the owner can't wait to sell up and move out. John Pedley has his heart set on a new house and a new life. Yeah, I'll be swapping the five bedroom house, luxury car and latest gadgets for a mud and wood structure in a village with no running water and no electricity and therefore no television um, in Uganda. And I feel like I'm the winner, definitely. The self-made millionaire plans to sell everything and plough the money into an African charity he's setting up. And no one is more surprised than he is. In the past, he says he was obsessed with money, a professional con man lying, cheating and stealing to get what he wanted. I was a pretty despicable human being. Did I care about anyone else? No. And it meant that if I didn't have things that I wanted and I could steal them, that I would steal them. It meant that I lied almost constantly about anything that would help me out. I thought I was indestructible. I mean, and I went back to the life that I'd been living before. <clears throat> Big deals, women, illicit extramarital affairs, and a lot of alcohol, and back to drink driving. But six years ago, he walked into a church and became a born-again Christian. He says he hasn't touched a drop of alcohol ever since. His focus now, the charity which is offering troubled British teenagers the chance to build facilities in Uganda. Is this real? Is this just another addiction? No, I'm just desperate not to see kids in this, other kids in this country make the same mistakes that I have made. And I just want to give them a space where they can do something and do something positive. From his million pound home in rural Essex, it's easy to say that money doesn't buy you happiness. John knows the real test will be when he goes to Uganda, but he believes his transformation is nothing short of a miracle. Claire McGlasson, Anglia News, Finchingfield, near Saffron Walden. What a remarkable turnaround.